A wonderful warm welcome to this episode of Blooms for You. Not hot, I am waiting for some heat, but it is warm and I am in flip-flops and wow, por fin, I cannot believe it. Anyway, these episodes, these clips are there for everybody that has ever commented on any of my videos and everybody that I can identify who has subscribed. They go on a list and then eventually, as I go down the list, I bring up all the names and match them to blooms that have opened in my collection to say a thank you and address you personally to let you know how much I appreciate your support on my channel. Got a lot of airflow today, but that doesn't mean that my Prostechia cochleata variety Lancifolia isn't highly, highly fragrant. I could make this intro super long because I am really enjoying her perfume. Heavy, heavy honeysuckle burnt molasses combination make no mistake, I know exactly who's playing in my blooming alley right now. Everybody else is getting drowned out if they have a fragrance, except my night bloomers. But it's always a pleasure to have a cluster blooming orchid that does what she does so that I can say thank you to everybody who watches this video who is not mentioned here today. I want to say thank you with blooms like these to you for supporting me on my channel because you are here and that helps a lot. I appreciate it very, very much. If you've never commented on my channel before or you have a private account on YouTube, if you don't want to be mentioned, I get that. But if you have subscribed on a private account, I cannot see you. If you would like to have a mention further down the line, please leave me a comment so that I can identify you and put you on the list. I do not want anybody to ever feel like I have jumped them past them, didn't see them, or I am ignoring them. So identify yourself, make yourself known, or if you prefer to stay anonymous, then I understand that and respect that completely. But I want you to know that you are appreciated. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your support. Now, let's go and have a look-see as to which other orchids have come into bloom and whose names have come up, if you would be so inclined to join me for that. What can I say? Catlia Siamese Doll Kiwi. These two blooms are dedicated to Joanne Caglione and Barbara Leibovitz. I hope that you like yourself some Catlias. I hope that you like yourself some spotted Catlias. And I hope that you like yourself some beautifully smelling Catlias as well because this one ticks all the boxes. These two blooms, they bloom for you, Joanne Caglione and Barbara Leibovitz, to say thank you to the two of you for supporting me on my channel. This orchid puts a smile on her face because she has been through quite the trials and tribulations since she arrived in my collection. First of all, this is the first time I've got two blooms in two years. 2020, she bloomed with one bloom. 2021, just one bloom. Here we are, two blooms, and 2019, she bloomed with two blooms. Still, she had a division in 2020, so that could probably be a reason why she didn't bloom for the second time with two blooms in 2021. And the mealybugs also do like this orchid, so she sometimes has mealybugs developing where the buds come out of the growth. Thinking that you can get ahead of a mealybug is usually good enough once you've dealt with it and taken care of it. But as bifoliates go, there are always exceptions and dealing with one mealybug doesn't necessarily mean you've saved your buds. Here we are, 2022, two blooms, one for Joanne Caglione and one for Barbara Leibovitz. Just to say thank you very, very much. Your support on my channel is very much appreciated. Well, I spoke about the fragrance, so let me describe that for you a little bit. Unfortunately, we don't have scratch and sniff technology just yet. But if I were to tell you to tap your screen and scratch and sniff, you would be getting a citrusy floral fragrance that has a note of wax to it, which is kind of, well, kind of makes sense because the blooms themselves are also very, very tough and waxy in their structure. It is a strong fragrance. It's not overbearing, it's not unappealing. It is something that you would like to surround yourself with and it is a definite asset to what you see on the bloom front. Now, I always thought the kiwi part of this named cultivar of Siamese doll was because the blooms would be a little bit more on the green side. Kiwi as in comparison to the fruit, but then I recognized that kiwi can also be on the yellow side now. And then I thought, well, maybe it was a New Zealander that named his cultivar kiwi, 
And here I have a piece of that kiwi. I have no idea. But the fact that they start out to be kind of green when they first open up made sense to me that it was called kiwi. However, we've now transitioned a little bit into the yellow and they've been open about five days. I would prefer, to be honest with you, if they would just stay on the green side a little bit more longer because you would think that these blooms are now aging. They're not. I have maybe if the conditions can just hold off with dry winds, another 10 days to enjoy these blooms in my blooming alley and their fragrance. They are not as long lasting as I would have thought, but their waxy structure probably makes that a downside because they dehydrate very, very quickly if the environment is super dry and that is what's happening here in my climate. Oh, and my goodness, not only are the sepals and petals nicely spotted, but the leaves are spotted as well. All this good fun stuff this orchid does when she grows and I just absolutely love it. The richness of that lip is absolutely true. And even though these blooms light up if the sun hits them from behind, they then start to look a little bit more washed out. And it would be impossible to see the depth of the velvety rich purple, royal purple as I like to call it, of that lip. There is another fern growing in the pot as well, so I haven't rummaged around if there are any new growths. I should have two leads on this orchid. In the past year, I've only ever seen one lead continue to activate after the division, so true once again to their reputation, bifoliates will throw a little bit of a strop after being messed with. Maybe after this blooming, I will see two new growths coming for the next go around. Anywho, I ramble, I babble, I gush over my Siamese doll kiwi, but I should be focusing and I will just say thank you one more time, focusing on the dedication of these blooms to Joanne Caglione and Barbara Leibovitz. Ladies, thank you very, very much for your support on my channel. Catlia Siamese doll kiwi, she blooms for you. Pristine white beauty blowing in the breeze. I'm trying to protect these blooms from what I'm experiencing here on my patio to the best of my ability. I think I'm just about to get away with it. So before they frazzle out on me after such a short period of time in my blooming alley, they've only been open four days and they are not looking like they're gonna hold up against the conditions. But before they frazzle out on me, let me say, Maya Jezdic and Lil Hemi. One bloom each for the two of you from my Lelia Purpurata variety back Häuserie and Orchid. That just is amazing. I would like to call her Majestic, but actually Majestic belongs to all my Angrecoids. This orchid is just the essence of pure elegance, if I can call it that. Even her fragrance is sheer elegance. It's one of those fragrances that are so elegant, divine and beautiful that it could be a dessert of a three Michelin starred restaurant. You think you're getting lemon sherbet, but it's being presented to you in such a way that you're not sure what you're looking at. But the fragrance is coming off the dessert, off your beautifully presented plate, and you are inhaling the perfume of lemon sherbet with all that hint of cream. Just like these blooms, you would think that you could bite into them and experience the fragrance on your palate. So you take the utensils provided to you. We know Michelin restaurants always have their own little fancy utensils to experience their dishes so you take that utensil and you go in and your visual is playing tricks on you and then that whole flavor starts to explode and distribute itself in your mouth and it's just delicious and you sit back and you close your eyes and you go mmm this is so good and then you remember where you are <laughs> in a three-star Michelin restaurant and then you get back to your posture and behave yourself and continue to eat the dessert as if it's nothing special well it will always be something special <laughs> the memory of that fragrance and that flavor will always be something special and that is what this orchid brings out in me not just the fact she's got white blooms. I just love that vintage lavender. It's such a touch of class. But on top of that, whatever you're looking at and then you've got that fragrance, it makes no sense. But, you know, just give me more. Can I have some more, please? You know? Yeah, that's what this orchid does. And it's a shame that my conditions are going against these blooms and they'll probably frazzle out sooner and I won't have them around as long. So, Maya Jezdic 
and Lil Hemi. Your support on my channel is very, very much appreciated and it gives me great pleasure to dedicate these two blooms to the two of you to say thank you to the two of you for supporting my channel. I got me some other summer bloomer to bloom for Eliza, Bobby Leda and Sanjay Chakraborty. These are blooms from my Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex and what a relief that she is blooming as well. This orchid hasn't seen a lick of light for many many months during the spring and if you see speckles of dust let me just tell you I'm not risking the blooms by wiping the leaves off. It is super windy. I have got a lot of natural airflow meaning there's a lot of dust in the air meaning all of that lands on my leaves and I clean the orchids as best as possible but not at the risk of blooms. Let me tell you about her fragrance. Oh, first of all, before I go down that rabbit hole, Eliza, Bobby Leda, Sanjay Chakraborty, my Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex, she blooms for the three of you to say thank you very, very much for your support on my channel. Now let's go down the rabbit hole of the fragrance of this orchid, which is absolutely phenomenal. There's no other way to describe it. She is super sweet super fruity and it's easy to describe the fragrance as skittles fruity but you have to bite into them it's not good enough just opening your bag and sticking your nose in the bag to get the fragrance you have to bite into a handful of skittles to appreciate just how fruity these blooms smell but she's not called tabasco text just because it sounds fancy i don't know but because she has a kick of chili in the notes with the sweetness. So if you are like me and you like your food spicy, including desserts with a kick of chili to bring out all the other flavors, well, that is what this orchid smells like. And if you were to read the label in the back and you see Tabasuco Tex, well, <laughs> let's call that a typo for the lack of a better term. It's Tabasco Tex. This orchid is in desperate need of a repot, a revamp. She has completely filled the pot with her roots. I'm not ready to do that just yet, simply because I wanted to see these blooms. She didn't do so well for me in last year's blooming, surprise with less light in the spring of this year, and here she is chucking out blooms again. Oh well, you do you, boo, as long as you bloom. <laughs> but I have three more buds on the go. The only thing is, they're pretty quetched. I think that we're gonna get a little display out of this one right here. But we're uh, going to be hard pressed about that one that's tucked away underneath there. And then there's another one, well, somewhere behind that, right down in there. It's a bloom that is just not going to see the light of day. It's just cracking open. So we'll just focus on the ones that we can see. And maybe my spring next year will give me better conditions so that I can start fertilizing early. Not that the spikes on this orchid would be as long as, let's say, a sweet memory, but they shouldn't be this short either. So the lack of fertilizer, the lack of nitrogen during the months of May to April when she was starting to, you know, respond to warmer temperatures, supposedly, she responded to the longer day lengths by, by spiking when she should have, but the lack of the fertilizer has made this all a little bit crowded. Still, I am celebrating the blooms that I can see. Pleasure to pass them on to Eliza, Bobby Leda and Sanjay Chakraborty because you support my channel and I thank you for it. Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex. If you want to enjoy that fragrance, grab a handful of Skittles, Put a slice of chili into that and pop it into your mouth all in one go. There you go. That is the fragrance of this orchid. Divine, beautiful, very happy that she has decided to bloom. Thank you so much to the three of you. Dendrobium polyanthum. Oh, I'm so happy that this display is prettier than I was expecting it to be. Oh, but let me dedicate these blooms first. So thank you to Cham Hua Lan, Susanna Boone, Wasn't Me, Sawyer's Kitchen, Tess Blog, Helen Urquhart, Mike M.W. Tyrrell, Anne DeBaldo, and Cleoi. This little spectacle of Dendrobium polyanthum, these blooms are for you 
also to say thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. Let me just put it out there. I thought it wasn't going to be as nice as last year's because all the canes that are blooming are somewhat separated away from each other. And I thought it's going to look a little bit sparse, even though we have a lot of blooms. But no, it would appear that they have filled in the blanks nicely. And here you can see a classic example of why I like to dedicate blooms while there's still buds on canes. But the wind has been so terrible in the past weeks that I couldn't film these cute blooms without having to constantly apologize for I can't get this camera to focus it was that windy but you see there are some blooms that are fading and they were the ones that were to open first now all the buds have opened and the first ones are fading basically these blooms last all of about three weeks I think the wind is going to take them out a little bit sooner it is dry wind it's not necessarily hot wind but it's persistent and yeah you can see that the blooms are relatively delicate in their makeup and that wind just dries them out and they are going to be going over probably in the next couple of days still it was a pleasure to see her once again in my blooming alley and to experience her gorgeous sugar licorice fragrance up close to the orchid it is very obvious standing a little bit further away let's just say three four feet you wouldn't notice the fragrance at all but the closer you get to those blooms it is definitely a beautiful sugary licorice fragrance which is completely different from anything i've experienced bloom wise in the past this orchid is absolutely rocking it on an inorganic mount it seems to be happy and seems to be getting all the humidity and water that it needs because I have got five growths coming up already at the base of the canes plus cakeys growing on cakeys to the left of the orchid while she is still in bloom. That to me is pretty amazing because these canes are a little bit more succulent like in their texture. They don't feel like a hard cane and for her to already be getting her grow on is pretty impressive. So I'm pushing this orchid now a lot of water I hardly let her dry out me against the wind so far I think I'm winning I'm not seeing any concertina leaves and that is what I really want to avoid is getting these concertina leaves being like a succulent kind of a cane I feel she needs a lot more water than the hard cane type dendrobiums but wow super happy to see she's doing well on that mount so Cham Hua Lan, Susanna Boone, Wasn't Me, Soya's Kitchen, Tess Blog, Helen Urquhart, Mike M.W. Tyrrell, Anne DeBaldo, and Cleoi. Your support on my channel is so appreciated. Thank you very, very much, Dendrobium Polyanthem. She blooms for you. Lelia Zip. I wish I could continue calling her Lelia Zip. Oh, how can something so beautiful with that elegant name of Lelia now have to be called Catlia Zip? Oh, all right, well, we won't worry about that at this point in time, but I do struggle calling this orchid Catlia Zip. I am not struggling, however, to dedicate these first blooms on my patio to Temboan Village, Ina Orchid Oma, Erin Folpe and Vindia Semi. Catlia Zip, she blooms for you and she blooms for the first time here in my collection. I've had her since November 2019 and <laughs> it took quite some time to get her going. However, she is so vigorous that she's already been repotted once and she's already had a division taken out of her once and that division now lives in Greece. So <laughs> it's not like the orchid isn't vigorous. It's like it takes time for her to mature and then bloom. But for a first time blooming to get both leads to bloom beautifully, <laughs> I'm blown away by the color contrast of the orange. If I had her in the sun, it would blow out the colors completely. I'm hoping that my stills and stock footage will give you an impression of just how majestic and beautiful these blooms are. She gives me the vibe of the Fires Tunk and Billy, to be honest, except that her petals and sepals are not white on the back, but the color of the lip and also with that bronze orange, depending on how the light hits the blooms. Well, what a beautiful, beautiful sight and what a pleasure to have her finally matured to blooming size. There is no fragrance. Suppose you can't have it all. <laughs> 
I have both parents and I wonder which one is going to bloom first for me next. Probably the Tenebrosa that I have will bloom for me seeing as the other parent, the Millery, is not doing very well. It is fighting for survival. Well, both of us are fighting for the survival of the Millery. I need help from that orchid and it seems like it's trying so we'll keep going. It would be wonderful to be able to have both parents in bloom and the zip in bloom maybe in four years, if it is up to the millery to make it. Still, it is my utmost pleasure to dedicate Catlia Zip Blooms to Tembowan Village, Ina Orchid Oma, Erin Folpe, Vindia Semi. All of you are so very much appreciated. Thank you so much for your support on my channel and for your always encouraging and motivating comments. I so very much appreciate it. Tulumnia blooms. Who doesn't like Tulumnia blooms? Well, I am hoping that Tanya Abaimova and Marcelo Giampietri like Tulumnia blooms because my Tulumnia pomegranate blooming for the second time this season. She blooms for you. I have three spikes on the go, but because I don't stake my spikes, they are growing pendant. They are rather long spikes. Meanwhile, this Tulumnia is also rather large. Very, very happy to say that these spikes are not stress spikes because I've only just recently transitioned her from a wet dry cycle into a semi hydro setup. But nope, these spikes are spikes from a very, very happy Tulumnia. And I have three. Based on where she lives, two of them are growing out of the same growth. That is a first for me. And they are growing towards where the spikes thought was the light source and that is towards a reflecting white facade. The third spike is pointing a little bit <laughs> in the opposite direction because it actually grew towards the actual light source, which is, you know, south facing under my blooming alley, which at the moment is just bright shade. So, <laughs> and because that third spike that is pointing away only has two blooms, I figured I was going to make a little community dedication for Tanya Abaimova and Marcelo Giampietri just to make sure that the little blooms give a little bit more impact and also reflect how grateful I am for your support on my channel. These blooms are relatively large as well in comparison to any Tulumnia bloom. Hey, once again, it's a big Tulumnia. <laughs> Seems to be doing really well in her semi-hydro setup. I'm not seeing any desiccation on the existing leaves, but now it's also growing another new growth at the base that wasn't there when I transitioned this orchid. I hope that you can hear the relief in my voice because I've lost Tulumnias in the past due to a semi-hydro setup that was not considering how dry the base needs to stay, and a lot of them rotted out, much to my chagrin. I just didn't have a big enough basket to use my classic Tulumnia setup and I was thinking of getting a mini bird cage to simulate the same kind of setup but then I thought no, give it a go and semi-hydro it is and blooms we have. So thank you very very much Tanya Abaimova and Marcelo Giampietri for your support on my channel. I'm a very proud semi-hydro growing Tulumnia orchid grower <laughs> with spikes that bloom for you. I appreciate your support very, very much. Just one more thing left to do and say here about this orchid, quick update, she is busy. She is busy. Prostechias are one of my favorite genus just because they are so vigorous. Look at all these new growths coming and we're not done yet. There's more over here, two eyes swelling at the base. At least I hope you can see that. Sorry for the jiggle. Yeah, she's busy. New growths, perfume, strong perfumed blooms. It's all happening at once. And right now she is super thirsty. I feel as though I'm watering a catacetinae. Every third day I have to fill her reservoir. The amount of energy this orchid is currently using up needs to be supported but I am hoping that we can see her one more time in the next episode of Blooms For You because these blooms actually do last quite some time. They open from the bottom up and then, well, we still have some more buds to go. Of course, the bottom ones will eventually fail, but I believe that we will see her again in the next episode 
I have a strong feeling that I've got her for another two weeks looking marvelous. The single blooms aren't very, very striking, but you put them into a show like this and it's like a little firework display, little stars popping up and out of those straight spikes. Just love this orchid. It's never given me a problem and who doesn't mind orchids like that in their collection? It makes a nice change from the ones that we really have to watch out for. The brown tips on my orchid are lack of humidity, strong and dry winds. Well, that'll always cause some damage to the leaves. It's just aesthetics. I could cut those off, but I prefer not to be cutting into any kind of tissue. Eventually, that tissue at the tip will then be the newest tissue and will start drying up as well. So I just leave her the way she is. Anyway, that on a side note, thank you so very much for watching this video. Thank you to everybody for your support. It's massive. It means a lot. I say it, I mean it every single time. It's not just that I repeat it, I mean it every single time. Wishing you all a beautiful day, on one condition though, that you please stay safe, take care, bye!